SpongeBob. Yeah. Did you notice something familiar about this map? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're ranking animated cartoon shows that were obviously copycats of earlier successful series. I am not a clone. I'm an enhanced replication. Number 10. Digimon Digital Monsters, also known as Digimon Adventure, copy of Pokemon. And I've got this little pink thing following me everywhere. It is me, Motimon, at your service. Anybody want lunch? What do you call a series that follows a group of young kids and their unique monster companions as they battle other similarly crazy looking creatures in the traditional anime style? Well, you'd probably call it Pokemon, but this first copycat on our list also fits that description. The world of Digimon arrived on the scene only two years after the Pokemon animated series, with Digimon Adventure debuting in Japan in March of 1999. <laughs> Just what do you think you're doing? I'm glad we never hear you complaining. Mm -hmm. You people make me crazy. This early incarnation of the franchise lasted 54 episodes, but the public's interest didn't end there, as the world of Digimon continues to be extremely popular with fans young and old around the world. Matt, you were so awesome against that monster. You think so? You know, you were the man. And you're the wolf man. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, American Dragon Jake Long. Copy of Danny Phantom. Dragging up, yo! There's a bit of debate online as to whether or not American Dragon Jake Long is an exact copycat of the hit Nickelodeon series Danny Phantom, but one thing's for sure, both series have their passionate defenders. To be honest, both cartoons feature young protagonists who lead pretty fantastic double lives, with Danny Phantom accidentally gaining the supernatural powers of a ghost, while Jake Long comes from a long line of human-dragon hybrids. If I didn't know any better, I'd swear you were following me. <laughs> well, maybe I am. Well, maybe you should stop. Maybe you should chill. <gasps> There's a ton of adventure and charm in both shows, and the fans of each will probably argue to death about their subtle differences. In our eyes, though, American Dragon definitely owes at least a small creative debt to the Phantom. <laughs> Number 8. Chipchilla, copy of Bluey. Charming, grounded, and genuinely funny. Is it any wonder Bluey has become a worldwide smash? I'd say I'm pretty good at this. You sure are. Sorry, that is not actually Bluey, and on closer inspection, that becomes pretty obvious. But when Chipchilla debuted in October of 2023, it raised more than a few eyebrows for its similarities to the beloved Australian kids show. Now that is a solid economic plan. The series is one of the flagship original programs on BentKey, a youth-oriented streaming service developed by conservative media outlet The Daily Wire. Though it centers on a family of homeschooled chinchillas rather than cattle dogs, everything from the visual aesthetics to the music to the family dynamics seem heavily, let's say, inspired by Bluey, all the while missing the original's point entirely. Seems like a little personal accountability might be in order, huh? What was that? Nothing, nothing at all, nothing. Number seven, Silverhawks, copy of Thundercats. Call him back, the green button. Our next cartoon copycat is the shameless star set Thundercats ripoff, Silverhawks. Both shows featured Japanese animation by the Pacific Animation Corporation, and both were distributed by the production company Rankin Bass. Those involved specifically created Silverhawks as basically a new Thundercats just set in space. Go, Tally Hawk! Cameras on! So, does this mean Silverhawks sucked? Not at all, actually as the show featured a similarly high level of animation quality, fun storylines, and a bitchin' theme song, which many fans can still sing to this day. It's gotta count for something, right? Wings of silver, birds of steel, silver Number 6. Galtar and the Golden Lance, copy of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. The name is Galtar. If you want the Golden Lance, come and get it! Hanna Barbera was looking for a slice of that sweet, sweet He-Man money when they released this obvious cash grab back in 1985. Galtar and the Golden Lance followed a similarly macho protagonist with a very badass main weapon as he and his crew protected a colorful fantasy world from the forces of evil. Fight, Galtar! Although 
although lacking a bit of the unintentional comedy that has since gone on to define its Masters of the Universe counterpart, Galtar and the Golden Lance nevertheless possessed all of the imaginative animated tools to make it a minor hit with the Saturday morning cartoon set. The water! It's boiling! No, it's freezing cold! Number 5. Challenge of the GoBots Copy of The Transformers And soon the People's Republic would belong to me, along with the rest of this puny planet. Okay, here's a fun fact. The GoBots toy line actually edged out the Transformers by a little less than a year when they debuted in Japan in 1983. This doesn't change the fact that the animated series Challenge of the GoBots was clearly indebted to the success of the Transformers cartoon, which had already gained serious steam as the latest Saturday morning obsession. Despite the fact that they both premiered in the same month, the GoBots show was viewed largely by the public as a cheap imitation of Optimus Prime and company, without even a special Autobot or Decepticon-esque seal to differentiate hero from villain. Today, these transforming robots from <clears throat> Gobatron are perhaps better suited as a cartoon trivia answer than the Animation Hall of Fame. What are you guys doing here? I it's me, Leader One, from the Challenge of the GoBots. Remember? Challenge of the GoBots? Never even heard of that. Number four, Street Sharks. Copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Street Sharks. You've all heard of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but are you aware of all their various copycats? No? Well, there were a lot of them, from biker mice from Mars to street sharks. Yup, it seemed as if every species was given their chance to become mutated and fight crime, and these sharp-toothed sharks were no exception. Then there's only one thing to do. You're right. It's time we got to the bottom of this mystery. The Street Sharks were four brothers whose DNA was spliced with those of various sharks by their father's evil partner, Dr. Paradigm, who, naturally, seeks the shark's destruction. This basic premise is nowhere near as charming as the Turtles, and the Street Sharks only mustered a three-season run before they were canceled. Sharks only. This time. Ready, Jab? It's shark diving time! Number three, Goober and the Ghost Chasers. Copy of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Chasers magazine and I oh no he's gone again there were a number of Scooby-Doo ripoffs produced by the Hanna-Barbera team after the runaway success of that titular Great Dane and his friends some have stood the test of time Jabberjaw anyone <laughs> while others have been relegated to the also-ran annals of cartoon history. Goober and the Ghost Chasers was one such series, which followed the usual team of teens who investigated supernatural mysteries alongside their talking dog, Goober. I wouldn't be caught dead under a sheet with a ghost like that. Although there were some major differences between this show and Scooby-Doo, such as the existence of real ghosts the team had to outwit, this wasn't enough to Goober any more than 16 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Snorks, copy of the Smurfs. This ought to be good. <laughs> if you've ever watched an episode of the Smurfs and thought to yourself, hey, this would be a lot better if it were set underwater, that's pretty much the gist of this Hanna-Barbera series. But it's not all bad news, as Snorks is a bit more fondly remembered than other cartoons on this list. Darlings, you're upstaging me! Maybe it's the colorful animation, the likable characters, or the quality voice acting on display, but Snorks earned enough positive response to garner four seasons on the air. So it was doing something right. Here goes. Keep your Snorks crossed. It's working! Alright! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island. Copy of SpongeBob SquarePants. Hey, Bingo! I'm open for fun! And I have lots of great ideas sloshing around in my head. Slash, 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 slash. Rob Paulson is a legend in the animation industry, having voiced characters from iconic franchises across the board, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Animaniacs, as well as Corky from the aforementioned Snorks. So, when even he is claiming that a show he worked on was derivative, fans can probably take his sentiments to heart. Hey, slip and slide. Hey, Bunga. I have a plan for today, and I want you to guess what it is. 
Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island was the cartoon in question, a shameless riff on SpongeBob SquarePants that featured a manic talking coconut and his kooky friends getting into mischief. Thankfully, the kids' WB show only mustered two very short seasons before it was canceled. Please leave! <gasps> Go away! <gasps> now! Okay, Mr. G. What cartoon do you think is the biggest ripoff? Let us know in the comments. Leave me out of this! Oh, I'll leave you out, all right! Out the window! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.